a college football analyst for the CBS and the CBS Sports Network. You can catch him throughout the season on College Football Today on CBS and Inside College Football on CBS Sports Network, which has a packed lineup of games this weekend, including multiple ranked teams highlighted by number 19 Stanford taking on San Diego State. He's a good friend, Rick Neuhausel. How are you, Rick? Rich, I'm well. How are you, my friend? I am doing just fine. Um, Anthony Munoz just left uh, the studio. <laughs> I used and... to call him the Eclipse. <laughs> when I was a freshman at UCLA, I walked down there. This was back when UCLA was played in the Coliseum, right? And mm-hmm. He and Keith Van Horn and Brad Buddy and Roy Foster, that was their offensive line. I looked at him, I'm going, we are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> He's still that big. He's they still that enormous, were enormous, and what a great player. What a great now, player. Now, he said he had an interesting take on, on um, the fact that did you see that USC is uh, says that they're 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 undefeated against Texas going into this week's game? I did. <laughs> What'd you think about that? That they well, say they're you know, know all time. They have they have an explanation, but to put that in the notes when you're playing Texas, uh, I don't know that it was necessary. I certainly understand the reasoning, but uh, it isn't as though we've forgotten that epic game in 2005 and, and Vince Young's performance. It yeah. was one for the ages. Well, they said that the that the NCAA said that they had to vacate all the games, wins and losses from that <laughs> season, based on what happened with Reggie Bush. And so, they apparently have like a letter from the NCAA uh, Department of Stats or whatever it's called to say that they're in the right to say that they didn't lose that game. Again, again, they they may have a absolute defensible position, but it isn't <laughs> like we forgot that 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 performance on that stage. Uh, that was a star-studded evening and uh, Mac Brown's crew uh, came out on top and Vince Young, as I said, won for the ages. That's right. Uh, Rick Neuheisel joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Okay, so you've got Clemson against Louisville this week. How do you think that's going to play out between the defending national champs uh, as, by the way, it looks like Deshaun Watson's going to get his first NFL start here tonight in Cincinnati, taking on Lamar Jackson. What do you think? Well, I, I think, you know, we all remember game day traveling to Louisville a year ago about this time when Florida State came into town, right? And they put a show on uh, that I don't think anybody's going to forget. They, they, that 63 points they hung on Charles Kelly's defense and Jimbo Fisher – uh, that's going to be one of those things that they'll show over and over again when Louisville gets ready to go back to and, and play the rematch in Tallahassee. But this defense that they're playing in this particular game, Jared Stidham at Auburn got all he needed of it. 11 sacks last week in Death Valley in a game that uh, offensively they struggle, but give Auburn's defense a lot of credit. You know, they win the game 14-6. to six. They're coming in there. And if you look at the stat line last year, as great as Lamar Jackson was, and he was – stupendous 47 sacks rich 47 sacks last year against one of the best athletes to ever play quarterback and and to me that is a recipe for disaster especially coming in with a with a group of guys that uh, is hungry for more after 11 sacks against Stidham and company so I'm leaning towards Clemson it wouldn't shock me if Louisville gets it done and if in fact it does happen if it comes to pass we're all going to be talking about Lamar and you know the the, the duplicating his Heisman effort from a year ago. But really the story should be about Bobby Petrino because it wasn't so long ago that Bobby Petrino was left for dead. That motorcycle accident in Arkansas, I mean, who could have imagined that he'd be back on this kind of stage, taking a program that, you know, was lucky to get into the ACC uh, when Maryland departed for the Big Ten, and here they are, you know, capturing the nation's attention on a stage against the defending national champs with a quarterback that wears a cape. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a phenomenal story. So um, when, if, if Clemson wins this thing and you take a look at the rest of their schedule, you could pretty much pencil them in, right, to the – Well, they have another game to, at the end of think? the month. I, you know, if Clemson gets through September, I think mm-hmm. they're in really good shape. And that mm-hmm. all depending on how James Blackman – the replacement quarterback there at uh, Florida State does. But assuming that he struggles like a lot of freshmen do, then I would say yes. But that Virginia Tech game on okay. September 30th looms large. That, that kid there, Josh Jackson, the true freshman, he came out of the box hot against West Virginia, uh, 200 yards passing, 100 yards res- uh, on the ground. And Justin Fuente's got kind of a reputation now as a quarterback whisperer. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule that one out, especially uh, when the game's in Blacksburg. Rick Neuheisel joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Does Urban Meyer have a quarterback problem? 
Rick? I don't think so. I, you know, I, I, I read all these accounts of, you know, confidence issues with JT Barrett. And all I do is go back to his freshman year where he had 34 touchdown passes and, and almost 1,000 yards rushing. To me, the issue at Ohio State is more about kind of a musical chairs of offensive coordinators and offensive philosophy, right? It was Tom Herman just a few years ago when they won a national championship. Then they had that, you know, you know musical chair deal with quarterbacks where uh, Cardell Jones had won, so they got him some reps, and JT did his job. But when they put JT Barrett back in the game and ran him at the season's end against both Michigan and Notre Dame, he had over 300 yards rushing in those two games combined and over 300 yards passing as well. That's JT Barrett's best offense. And that's what I know Kevin Wilson and Ryan Day, the co-coordinators there now, are trying to get their stamp on it. But if they'll just go back and look at JT Barrett's legs churning and making all kinds of plays, there's plenty of big plays that can come off of that. And ultimately, that's where they've got to find uh, the happy balance. And I wouldn't be surprised if Urban Meyer doesn't get back into that offensive play calling. Mm -hmm. And so as we're sitting here in middle September, just assuming Alabama's going to be in the big game again, which, which is team a good you, assumption. <laughs> okay, so then which yeah. team do you think out there has the best chance to, to beat them this well, year? let's say this about Oklahoma. You know, Baker Mayfield stole the show with planting the flag and going yeah. 16 for 17 in the second half. But that defense was much improved. Rich, that defense gave up 854 yards to Texas Tech last year. 854 yards. That defense the other night looked like it could do damage. And what I think is kind of telling this year in college football is kind of this reemergence of defense. Auburn and Clemson played a whale of a defensive game the other night. Georgia and Notre Dame played a whale of a defensive game the other night. And truthfully, Oklahoma did as well. Uh, so to me, with Baker Mayfield and his ability to run the Lincoln-Riley offense and the, the run-pass option thing, which is like dealing from the bottom of the deck in Vegas, it's almost cheating. When you can do that as well as they can, they're <laughs> clearly in the hunt. But they've got to get by Oklahoma State. I think Mason Rudolph and all that, those talented receivers in uh, the Big 12 at Oklahoma State are really, really going to give them a challenge now that Bedlam's moved a little earlier in the season. Dan moved it early in the season because it's a Big 12 championship game in which they could play twice, right? I mean, they could exactly absolutely play right. Twice. And then don't forget USC for, you know, out-bullying Stanford. You know, Stanford had taken over the Pac-12 as the bullies. They were the guys who had the line of scrimmage. Washington gave them a little bit of their own medicine a year ago and got to the Final Four. USC, that was a very impressive performance the other night in the Coliseum, putting over 300 yards of rushing. On, on Stanford. That's, that's unheard of. So I think the Pac-12 champion is going to be uh, in, the, in the conversation as well. So if I had to give you, Rick Neuheisel, one quarterback to win an NFL game in Los Angeles this weekend, and you're not allowed to choose Phillip Rivers, he's out of the mix, and you got to choose Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, or Jared Goff, who would you choose to win well, that Well, I love Goff. And, and uh, so I'm going to lean on the guy with a little bit of NFL experience, but both Darnold and Rosen, I promise you, NFL scouts are salivating because they are exactly – I said this before the season started. Darnold's like Roethlisberger. You know, he, he can play from the pocket. He's really good from the pocket, but when he gets out of the pocket, he's lethal, and, and he's continued to do that. And Rosen's first two games, nine touchdown passes, his ability to put balls where he wants to put them with the amount of trajectory necessary, they get there in a hurry – and, and he's looked tough doing it, take, standing in the pocket and taking it on the chin. I mean, he looked exactly like we saw the Minnesota Viking quarterback uh, the other night. Look, Bradford? Stand, yeah, Bradford. And Bradford was uncanny in that showdown with Drew Brees. If, if Rosen continues to play and he can keep his off-field annex to a minimum, I think both those guys are going to be gone before we're <laughs> what done do you, with three or four. What do you mean by off-field antics? Well, he sometimes, you know, has this want to – you know, take a, take a big uh, podium and, and, and want to talk too much. And, and there's some NFL guys that are concerned about that. You know, it, you know, the, the hot tub in the, in the, uh, in the yeah. dorm room, the stances on college football athletes, you know, are they, are they, should they be asked to go to school as well as play? And they don't go together. Those, those positions may be, may be defensible, but why, why do, what are you doing? Why don't you stay in your lane and play the game as you can play it as well as anybody. And if he can do that, and I think he'll, people close to him will talk to him about doing that. And I know Jim Moore is trying to get that also done. I think he's going to be, I think he's a, 
fa- he's a fabulous player. And I've been up close and personal. You know, my son was on that team for a little bit. I've watched him. He he can flat spin it. So you think that uh, when I'm at the combine with the network next February, and maybe all of these kids are going to be there, the conversation around Josh Rosen is going to be in the interview room talking to him to see if if he's going to he create a. Does he have to be the smartest guy in the room? That that's going to be the question. Does Josh Rosen have to be the smartest guy in the room? Is he one of those guys that lend, lend, can tend to be uncoachable? Or is he going to take the information and, and really glean from it? There, therein lies a big deal. And it's because he's got a strong personality, which is kind of, kind of backward because we all want strong personalities. We want yeah. that leadership guy. We want that guy who's intelligent, who's not only quick twitch body, but quick twitch mind. And certainly Rosen's in that category. But how important is it to you and how teachable are you? And, and I think it's also beneficial for Rosen in terms of his NFL stock that Jed Fish is now there because Jed Fish has been in the NFL. He know he's probably teaching him an NFL offense. He, certainly uh, in that second half against A&M, it looked nfl mm-hmm. And his ability to go right down the field and lead that team, uh, insurmountable odds, was, was something to marvel at. Miss talking to you, Rick. I really do. Uh, would love to have you on in studio. And my wife, Susie, knew that you were coming on. She wanted me to say hi to you. Okay? You tell her, hey, we were great together as co hosts. You... The problem right. is, you work too much. There's no time ever to steal your show from you. <laughs> Let's do it together, Rick. You got it. Right, we'll friend. chat soon. Take care. You got it. Hi That's everybody. it. You got it. That's Rick Neuheisel. Again, uh, he is with CBS Sports and CBS Sports Network. Stanford taking on San Diego State, part of the package that's on the CBS Sports Network this college football weekend. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you liked some of that, get some more of that on the Rich Eisen Show app. Follow all the information you see right here on the Rich Eisen Show.